Hey, hello. How you doing, everybody? Hello, chat. Hello, Diego. And up, hello you to you guys. What's up, guys? I'm great. I'm great. Um, welcome back to another episode of Max on Color. And um, today we're, we're going to talk a little bit about um, saturations, right? But before we start about that, I mean, um, to start things off, um, I think in the, in the last couple of episodes, we talked a little bit about theory and um, we had Cullen to, to help explain um, to us about ACES. So if you kind of like uh, missed that sessions, and if you want to know more about color management, which is, I assume by this, po by this point, I think y you all be like all master already. And um, yeah, because Cullen did such a great job in explaining all the tidbit and tiny detail for us mere mortals to understand that. So yeah, um, if you want to check out the, the, the last episode, um, couple of episodes from Max on Color. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, you can go to YouTube and search for Max on Training Team. And there you can go to the playlist. And in the playlist, you can check on Max on Color. And actually, we're t we talked about uh, color management for a while. And I think we picked, uh, we start the sessions, f uh, we started with a color bootcamp session, right, chat? with Chad explaining about the, the importance of uh, working with a higher bit depth image and so on. And Dr. Sassi also um, joined us in that session and explained of you know, the, the importance of having a more, um, a bigger color space to work on rather than working on a display color space. And then after that, that sessions um, continued by Cullen where we demystify ACES. So that's all those technical sessions. If you want to um, uh, catch up and if you want to know more about ACES, feel free to do that. But today, I am joined by Chad and my co-host Diego, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about the the, the artistic stuff, the, the creative stuff. You know, the, the more on the was it the, the the right brain side, Chad, the, the creative one. I'm not very good at that, man. I don't remember. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we switch our, our technical mindset a little bit and then uh, try to get a little bit creative. But before we do that, let me point you out to Maxon website. So if you want to check um, the upcoming webinars from Maxon or any event that Maxon hosts, you can go to new, um, news, maxon.net for, oh, for, for sure, and then go to news and click events. And on events, you see like all the upcoming events where we'll be there. So for example, this uh, Friday, Hashi and Seth will be back on another fun episode of VFX and Chill. And next uh, Monday, there will be another ongoing webinar on particles. And I think Chad is, is also in, in one of those um, uh, series where they break down the magic of working with particles. Mm -hmm. And then uh, next Thursday, we also have the Ask the Trainer. Um, make sure to show up um, to one of these um, events, right? And if you haven't got a free t-shirt, you can do so today. You can go to um, the link that I will, uh, that chat will paste in the, in the comment sections. And don't forget that you can redeem uh, this code, Particle Magic to the um, to the code sections and then you get the t-shirt for free it's literally uh, zero dollar but you just need to pay for the shipping cost which is around four dollar so this t-shirt is like our gratitude for you guys to be our community to always show up in one of our webinars and thank you so much for uh, building up such a nice community well um Hey, Max, really quick. Yes. Um, would you mind uh, copying and pasting the link for the shirt into our oh, chat? Of course, and absolutely. Paste it absolutely. That's super handy. Okay, thanks. Should be there now. Beautiful. So, Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Well, where do we start today? We're going to talk about saturations, right? Um, we are creature of habit. I think uh, you all probably may agree with us. And um, when we are doing things, we normally default back to our habit and we go to the tools that we feel comfortable to, right? And then um, the idea of today's session is that let's explore together. 
come and fail with us, you know, because, you know, we love to, to fail and while failing, we'll discover something. And um, the idea of this session is that we'll, we'll explore um, v various uh, way or method to explore different type of adjusting saturations when grading. So perhaps um, you can, um, you know, uh, pick one or two tips from today's sessions and use it for your next uh, project. Right. Um, Diego and I have some tips to share with you and um, probably chat as well. But Diego, do you want me to start or do you want to start first? So maybe maybe we can both start actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll give your screen first, right? Yeah. So let me actually share it here. Yeah. So the first thing that, that I have to say is that, okay, so what is saturation? What what saturation means? And what saturation gives to an image? What do you think, Max? Well, I think that's an um, excellent question, Diego. Um, I think it's one of like the big thing um, when, when grading. Um, I think there are three like foundations when, when you want to, uh, to create a grade on your image, to create a look on your image. Like first, we, we tackle the contrast. The second, we always tackle the saturations. And third is the texture, right? All together, that makes the good grade image. And then, you know, Saturations, it's like introducing color to your image. It's um, introducing the, the correct level to your image. And that, that, that is like, um, that there are plenty of ways to do that. And um, before I show m the, the tips from my, me, um, probably uh, you want to pick it up, Diego, and you want to continue from there. Yeah, so, so actually, I mean, yes, yeah, saturation is like, I don't know, it's like probably, all of us right now are in different parts of, of our world, right? Yeah. So you are in Germany. Chad, you are in the United States now? Correct. All right, so I'm in Bogota right now. And in my case, the temperature right now is cold. So that means that, for example, in my case, I live in a not, not so saturated world. You guys are in summer, right? Oh, so man, we are, guys... we're having a heat wave at the moment. It's so yeah. hard to cope with. So probably you guys right now live in a saturated world. We are. And what, what actually, I mean, when, for example, when I woke up here and it's raining, it's cloudy, it's not so saturated, probably I feel that I don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that I want to stay like in, a, in, a, in the same place, don't know, go out. Yeah. But we actually, when I'm in, a, in, a, in summer or in a place that is hot, I feel that I want to go out. I feel that I want to get some drinks. And it's like my, my emotions change. So that is, that is crucial, I think, to understand on saturation. Saturation is emotion. Saturation, is, it doesn't matter what technique do you use, it's like saturation gives emotion to your images. So for example, here, what I want to do is like, for example, I have here like the, the way to create a color in a, a huge saturation and luminance model. And this can be lack of saturation, a middle gray. Saturation is like middle gray, it doesn't have any color predominance. But if I take out this and I move it a little bit out of the center, I'm increasing saturation and I'm giving a hue to an image. So in this case, it's green. So what this means, so saturation is how far from a gray, from a middle gray, is a color. And that is giving you a perception of an image. The more saturated, probably you're going to feel, for example, in this red, you're going to feel danger. But for example, here, you're going to feel like, I don't know, like probably summer or something like that. So the, the way that you saturate the image is going to control the way that you're going to look at them and how you're going to feel it. So for example, I was like, right now I'm, I'm, I'm actually staying in my house, I'm recovering from a surgery, and I'm watching series a lot. And I'm watching Vikings, and I love it, and I love it. I really love it. I I, I actually like. I think I, I watched like the six seasons, like I don't know, like in two weeks, and I really love it. And here are some images that, as you notice, there is not so many saturation. There is not so much saturation. The colors are so. For example, here 
this is almost a, an analog image, also this one. And then because I finished Vikings and I want to get all more involved in the Viking worlds and so on, so I start to watch another series that is called The Last Kingdom. And suddenly I, I was like, okay, I like the story. It's kind of similar to Vikings, but I don't feel it like so strong and so epic as Vikings. And then while I was like, I don't know, like wondering and thinking, I discovered that probably the reason that I don't like The Last Kingdom so much is because look at the color. So the color, you can say here is really normal. It's saturated in, like it, you can say in a natural way, but it's not giving the mood, for example, of these parts. Of I was here. thinking that's a uh, behind the scenes, how do you call it, uh, making of uh, footage. Was that the, the show footage? Yeah. Oh man. Nice. So, okay. So it's actually it's actually the same world, the same like this, the same topic is war, is Viking and so on. But you know the color is so different. So based on that, what I want to say is that the saturation is giving you the motion, the motion of the shot. It's really, really, really important. And definitely the look, the look of the shot. So that's my first point of, of view about saturation, Max. Yeah, man, that's really cool. And we probably already know how to add or reduce such a, well, let me repeat, probably my audio was lost in the feed when we are changing screen, right? Let me, um, well, well, some of us, like most of us probably already know how to add or remove saturations because duh, there's like a very obvious sliders in, in every app or in every <coughs> host applications like in Premiere or in, in DaVinci Resolve, we all know the saturations um, slider. And for example, in, in Resolve, there are plenty ways where you can um, find saturations. But before we move on, let, let's focus on, on this particular uh, saturation slider over here. And um, the saturation slider over here, it, it's to me, it, it, it is like a, how do you call it? The unbiased uh, slider where you can just like take one signal and increase it to whatever level. I think um, back then we have a, uh, hands on with Max on um, starting on color grading uh, webinars with Diego as well. And in that particular webinar, Diego was talking about how to check your tools, how to test your tools. And one particular uh, way method to, to test your tools was with using, um, how do you call it, the, the gray scale. So for example, what Diego did back then, I'm sorry, let's, let's walk to the memory lane a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, let me create the the, the grayscale. Click right at the end. And then let me create a compound clip. Right click, compound clip. Oh, shit. There you go. Ramp. And create. So now I'm in, in color page. So if you see that we have a ramp that go from black to white, and we have our uh, waveform showing up, showing us the data that goes from signal that goes from zero to full, 1023, right? So probably uh, if you want to check your tools, like what Lyft is doing, it is doing that. It is tackling like the most um, bottom part of your signal, right? And then what is the gain doing? The gain is doing like just the top part of your signal. Meanwhile, it's it both of both of those are like pretty linear um, operations, and then the gamma is like have this uh, point uh, pin um, points where where the black and the white points are pinned. Meanwhile, it is affecting all the the data, the signal uh, in between. And then there's also one button, uh, one slider here, one uh, wheels, which is offset. And this is like. I think this is like the best way to describe um, this saturation slider over here. This offset takes everything and then move it up and move it down. So if this offset is tackling the, the, the luminance um, on your image, doing uh, um, how do you call it, it's affecting the, the brightness of your image like that, the saturations, it's similar like that, 
in, instead of um, how do you call it? affecting the luminance, it is affecting your signal. So for example, here we have an image from Ari Alexa, Isabella, and Loxy. So before showing you that, let's just use the, the LUT that coming from Ari. So it's like the very normal technical LUT that you can find in Ari website. So by adding the saturations, by... So, um, Max, I have a question about that. Yes. Why, why, why the image got saturated when you add a LUT? Sorry? So why the image got saturated when yeah, you put the LUT? That's a good question, man. Um, the image, it was like shot in a camera space, right? And the camera space has like this huge color gamut. And I'm sorry, I cannot show you the, the diagram of, of color gamut. If you have one, feel free to, to show that. So the camera space, uh, the, the recording space of this camera, um, Log C, it has like very wide color gamut and it can records the uh, wide, um, how do you call it? Uh, high dynamic range of particularly, I don't know, 14 stops or more. And um, as, we, um, in, as we applying the LUT to this image, it is converting that huge amount of color into like this very small gamut where your display can reproduce um, accurately. So that's why we saw this increase of contrast and increase of um, color saturations in our image. Thus, the image looks better, so to say. So in some ways, like it's like it's fitting the color from the camera mm -hmm. to a color space of, our of a monitor, of a yeah. display, and that's the reason that we see it already saturated, right? Yeah. So what will be the difference of doing that against just saturating the image and getting a similar result? I think when we are saturating the image without the LUT, we are saturating that in the in the camera color space, right? Yeah. So But why not why not to do it? If we're doing do that. Think? Yeah. Look, there you go. If if I am increasing saturations in the in the camera space, it means like, yeah, I I can see the the perceptionally I can see that the, there are some increase in color, but it's not as good as when I'm increasing it in my display color space, right? When the image is already yeah. correct in my display color space, so to say. Yeah. So the reason actually I I I I, I mentioned that is because. I mean, let's say that in many products, we yeah. still don't use color management. And mm -hmm. before, like two years, three years ago, four years ago, all of what we were doing, all of the content that we were doing was without a color management. Yes. So what we were doing was that we wouldn't use it a lot and so on. We were just using saturation. And then put the lip gum again. Yes. And then we got like in some way like a natural image, like yeah. normalizing the image. I think by, but... sorry, go on, man. No, say it. I think by doing this uh, setup over here, what I'm what I'm doing is that I'm increasing the saturations in Ari Log space, um, Ari Log C, um, how do you call it, state of the image. Well, it depends. Um, is it my color? No, my timeline yeah. color space is in, in yeah. So I'm I'm still I'm still like um, having this in a, in a in a camera space. Meanwhile, at the back, I finally how do you call it? Use the technical lot to transform that huge camera space into my display color space, so to say. And it's pretty right. much, it's pretty different if I'm doing like the the other way around, right? Like if I'm working after the lot, it means like my this node number one is already like transforming my. Um, image into display color space and then after that i'm working in a rec 709 uh, color space and then increasing the saturation over there but what i want to show is actually you know the difference of using like this uh, saturation slider when i'm using this saturation slider oh do you want to say something diego or <laughs> can i move on no what i'm just like like just to i mean in some way like like as a tip yeah it's like Probably you guys are there like thinking about, oh, color management, so on, boring, like mathematics, transformation oh, and so on. Yeah. But what I would say is that don't think about color management and that. Just think that in some way, what is doing the lot is actually like helping you, helping you. Look, 
like just applying a lot, you have a, in some way like already like a natural image. You didn't have to add saturation. You didn't have to add like leaf gamma gay and so on. So it's helping you. It's helping you. Don't think as a mathematics thing and so on. Just think that adding a color transformation to look your image correctly in your screen is going to save you work. It's yeah. going to save you to add saturation. That's the thing. I imagine, imagine doing that manually with lift gamma gain, and then um, have to um, increase all the saturations and contrast yourself. It may look good, but you know. Yeah, and the other thing I want to add about that is that saturation is not a natural uh, operation of an image. Yeah. What I mean about it, so you know, an image is RGB, red, green, and blue. So the idea is to saturate the image using R, G, and blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you add saturation, it's like you are in a non-natural operation of an image. So what that means is that you can create noise. And you can add, I mean, in some way you are not adding something natural for an image. So I would say the best way to start with a saturated or normalized image is to use a lot or to start using color management, ACES, or resource color management. There you go. Very well explained, Diego. Fascinating, yeah, that's great. Um, what I want to point out actually is like the behavior of this slider. So what actually this saturation slider is doing is that it takes whatever signal it, it, it has in the image and it just boosts it up and boosts it down. So it means that if your image, if, if the, in your image there are color which are less saturated and colors that are already highly saturated, and this slider will just take it like everything up or down. So that's probably the stuff that you want to uh, bear in mind when you're using any saturation slider, because it just take any color and then boost it up. Any like saturate any level of saturation of color in your image and just boot, boost it up or boost it down. And um, the other um, slider that you probably already um, no, and use it a lot as well. It's probably this slider over here, the, the color boost, right? And I think if you're familiar with Photoshop, you probably know, already know the, the vibrance slider. So the color boost is like similar to vibrance slider. It is like, um, how do you call it? It is boosting up the image, uh, the, the color, which is less saturated on your image and boost it up while <coughs> trying to preserving the highly saturated color. So if you're doing that, you can really see that it is different saturations compared to the saturation slider. Whereas like in saturation slider, all color got um, boosted like um, equally. Whereas the, the color booster, it is, it is going to, um, to saturate the less saturated color first. And then after that, you know, um, going into the, the, the highly saturated color. But the thing is, when you're using color booster, you easily uh, mess up your neutrals, like what you're seeing here. Uh, this is supposed to be like white neutrals. And if we are m going to measure it, we'll see that there are like a color tinge everywhere with a, with a color booster. So probably and also what is happening is that when you have a noisy image mm -hmm. and you use color boost what you're doing is that you're adding color to the noise exactly so mm -hmm. um probably the, the other so things next, that yes can i ask you a question about that yeah sure man <clears throat> um it's in photoshop and after effects what i understand about the vibrant slider is that it's also kind of respecting the 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 hue range of human skin tone so um it's saturating those tones less so okay. like it's going to bring up greens and blues and make those more vibrant and it's going to take like oranges and pinks and it's going to uh lower those or increase those or lower those i guess um more slowly it's going to affect those less um than it does other tones is there is that also kind of going on here with color I boost think, or is it i think the the color boost is like a, it, it it is um 
I don't know if it's like preventing the the it, it is uh, protecting the the skin tone, but I think what this slider doing is it's it's just like taking the less saturated color and boost it up, or the other way around okay. and you drag it to the to the minus slider. It is taking the highly saturated color and boost it down. So what gotcha. what, what actually I, what I want to show is that actually you can pair this two to to get a really nice uh, you know level of saturation of on, on your image. Like for example, if we are boosting up our saturations using our saturation slider, we can try to like, since uh, uh, now you can really see like the, the lips like really oversaturated, the reds is like laser red. We can probably combine that with a color boost and just like reduce it a little bit on to something like that. And that's one of so many uh, ways of combining those two, right? And um, I think last week I also have discussions with Diego and he kind of like showed me like really nice, interesting thing about this um, gain slider. So Diego, do you want to show that? Yeah. So let me come here. No, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So talking about the, the slider, so let me just first go here. Do you see my screen here? There? Absolutely. Yes, man. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me put this colorful image, really, really colorful image. So let me actually do the same as you do, as you did. Go here to the lot. And then I will say probably this lot. There you go. And I have a saturation. Or maybe extended video. It's actually 4.6. There you go, this one is better. Okay, so, okay, you have, you use the saturation slider here and also the color boost. So before actually showing that tip about saturating just with, uh, with the bars, I would like to say that, for example, if here you are using th this thing that this is a normalized image, this is mm -hmm. like base, and then you make a, lo a look here. And in the look, you just put, you just come here and make this in some way. So let's think that now your look is so hot, so so warm, but it will feel better if you add before a saturation note. They before just put the saturation. Look. Yes. Okay. Because what the saturation is going to do, let me just turn off the look. The saturation is going to separate the color of the image. I'm doing it here. wrong note here. So when I'm doing saturation here, you see it's separating the different colors of the image. Yeah. So when I'm applying a look, now the look will feel a little bit more vibrant, but a little bit more, I will need a little bit less of here. Look. Wow. And now it will, it will not feel so washed out because yeah. that's actually one of the problems that when you create a lot, a look, it's like, there are no separation in the image. So when you saturate, you also create separation between colors. So that means when you add some like some color wash or something, the colors will not paint uniform in all the image. The colors will separate. So for example, in some way, like talking about notes, like order, you will say that saturation need to be, can be after the base, but before the look. That way, the look will have a signal that is already separated. It's already separated and will not wash out all the colors from your image. So that's actually a really, a really great tip. Look, look the difference. If I just apply it here, the look, same without saturating, look how washed out it looks. Yeah. And before I apply it before, look how it looks. So you see completely, completely different. Wow. Completely different. So this is something that always need to take care, always need to take care. So Max was, was like asking me about how to saturate not using like color, saturation and color boost. And we talked before that saturation and color boost are not natural operation of an image. So one way we can saturate is using color bars. So what we can do is we can increase here and just increasing 
Y, R, G, B. And what I can do is I can just reset here the Y luminance. And as you see, now is the image saturated. So this saturation is more natural and more controlled than the usual saturation and color boost controls. It's less destructive, let's say. And it's, it's actually really, really important. Really, it's actually, for how I can say, my favorite method. When I'm doing like fast things and so on, I have a saturation node with this program. Nice. That this is this. And what I can do also, maybe you can have this saturation and so on. And instead of decreasing and so on, what you can do is you can come here and you can change the opacity of the node. And that way, it's like you are controlling the saturation. And always think, in grading, your eye is going to make trouble in your image. You are going to get use. You are going to get use of your image. So my approach is always, in this part, saturate the image a lot, that you feel in some way ugly. You will feel that after one minute of looking at your image, then you will, you will find it nice. That's the problem. So yeah. saturate Our eyes a lot. Adjust. Right. <laughs> yes. Saturate a lot and then come here to the key output and decrease it a little bit. And decrease it a little bit. That way you can control the way that or the more saturation you are having. But also what I like to add to this part that is not so creative but it's so important. And I wish every artist, every BFX artist, every motion graphic artist uh, knew how to use it is our lovely friend, the Vectorscope. Oh, so the Vectorscope nice. is, I, I, I always say that the Vectorscope is like a, a color wheel, not so beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually really nice. Okay, right now they, they make it better because I see the colors here, they make it better. But before it was just like Luma here and that's it. So the Vectorscope is giving me or is showing me a saturation and hue. In this part is showing me like I have a lot of saturation in the reds and in the yellow and not saturation here and not here in these parts. So as you notice, for example, when I do this part here, you can see how much I increasing and decreasing saturation. So why, why I say that it's so important to have in mind the vector scope in all of the color that we do, even in graphics or in VFX, because you know, at the end, we need to show our program in, in a device. It can be, I don't know, OTTs, or it can be broadcast. So in broadcast, when we are finishing, we have many problems with saturation. So for example, I just did a commercial last week about Gatorade, and all of the graphics were full. Let's think that all of the graphics were here, were out of, of the 75% of the, the vector scope. And what I had to do, I had to do some qualifiers and decrease the saturation. And then one of the artists that of the motion graphic that did all the animation was saying, wow, it looks so different, the reds. And I was saying, yes, it looks different because they were not legal. And that's something that we always need to think about it, is that thing on the device that we're going to use it. And at the end, one of the problems of the reason that most of the listing graphics and BFX works looks different in screens is because they don't use the vector scope. And at the end, what we do is in grading, we use some filters. For example, you can use filters here. Let me show to you how it looks. You can come here. And at the end, we use a really destructive filter that is a broadcast safe. Mm -hmm. So what the broadcast safe is doing is that, for example, if I hit a broadcast safe from here and I hit save, okay, so look. So it's actually, let's say that it's cutting the colors, so the colors will look different. Look the difference. Here I'm not applying anything. Look at everyone at the vectorscope, and look. Now the colors look so color, but here when I apply the broadcast, look. Come on, refresh. So now it's make broadcast, save, look is decreasing all the colors. So this is a problem that, I don't know, Chad, you were mentioned about, about Photoshop and so on. I wish there is a vector scope. I don't know if there is, 
but I wish you can have a vector scope in Photoshop. In Ro- yeah, that would be great. I think it, there is. It's it's like the um how do you call it the the package like nope omniscope or something like that does it does it run for like after effects and and photoshops or something yeah i don't know about photoshop after effects has its own vector scope yeah but no one uses it actually in, okay. in after effects and speaking oh. of vector scope um we we also um talk about this uh, like w- when i have my chat with diego and i think it, it's it's really nice to share with everybody um do you mind if i grab your screen diego yes so i think uh, like um um making sure that like um qcing your your image is like really important right and then reading all the scope is like really important and I think Diego also touched to one point where, you know, introducing the saturations before the LUT and not the other way around. I mean, we, we, I said that previously that, you know, it's better to work under the LUT rather than after the LUT because you, to your eyes, the image may look fine. But, you know, if you do that in vector scope, you probably see the, 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 the stuff that it is doing. Like, for example, if I'm using um, color space transform over here, instead of using LUT this time. Let's just use Ari Alexa to Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. And if I am, sorry. Ooh, I like that, what was it? Oh, it's <laughs> Windows Power Toys. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool, right? So yeah. instead of introducing the saturations after your transformation, you probably want to do that before, right? And um, I think um, I showed uh, Diego the the method that I stole in a bright di- daylight from Cullen Kelly. <laughs> and that is like his method of partying, which is I love like so much. That is just by simply going to fusions and then previewing your image in a, in a 3D cube, right? And... Um, if we are going to fusions, uh, it's just like another method for me. I know this approach, you can use it for so many things, but I just use it for, for example, to see like, did I saturate my image right? Did I do correct adjustment to my image or something like that? And then um, the idea is that we want to preview our image in this viewer in another form. And probably the best one to do that is in, in a 3D histogram, right? So I can do that by just simply adding another media out. Oh, by the way, if you if you don't know uh, what's happening in Fusions at the moment, is that um, this node over here, the media out, it is shown on the second screen, and it, and we have our image ported out to the media out, which is shown in the in the second screen. And if I press one. Yeah, you see, I already play around with this. <laughs> so um, if I, where, where's my 2D view, 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 2 d view. Okay, so if I press one, it means mm-hmm. like this media, it, it is now shown in the, in the, sorry, not this one, but this one. It is now shown in both viewer number one and viewer number two because we have like this tiny little dot over there. Over there, right? So at the moment, I just want to uh, view it in, the, in media number two, I mean, uh, viewer number two. So I just disabled uh, viewer number one. And then I want another media out to view my image in, in this viewer in 3D um, histogram. So to do that, I just type in um, media out, drop it, and I will port my image into this media out. And then to make it more um, cool, I'll just add this to, and it's, it's it's nothing important. It's just for um, how do you call it, so that it's really really geometrically beautiful. <laughs> it, it does nothing really. It's just adding a point. Um, it's my OCD. Um, 
So um, what I want to do now is like I want to um, I want to um, normalize my image using color space transform. Probably put it here. So ah, sorry, my train of thought is jumping back and forth, guys. So I want to <laughs> show the media out in in viewer number one, but I don't want to show it as two D image. Instead, I want to have a 3D histogram. If at first your 3D histogram doesn't look like this, uh, probably it's shown as a, as a 2D image, um, you need to go to 3D histogram, and then you can either choose a histogram or solid. In this case, I use solid. If I use a histogram, uh, use, uh, it's, it looks like that. So I want to use solid. And then the sampling point, I want it four, so one to one. And then now I want to see if I'm adjusting something in, into my image. I want to see what's happening into like this 3D histogram that represent my image inside a cube. So for example, I want to transform my image into like a rec seven from Aria or Alexa to Rec709. So I just copy that and paste an instance with a shortcut control shift V and put it here. So now I have an, an instance of my color space transformations in this media out number two. So here I would I will transform my image from Ari Alexa Loxy into Rex 709. You come up to point four. So um, now I want to show you like um, the importance of like probably like handling the saturations before your transformations instead of after your transformations is that when we're doing like let me drop in color corrections color corrector hit add and put it there another method uh, an uh, same same <coughs> thing control c and click some somewhere empty control v and then press shift while dragging it there so now in color corrector if i'm adding the saturations to my image as you can see, nice. that my, my transformations, uh, my, my, how do you call it? My node, a transformation node is kind of like acting like a, acting like a uh, virtual, uh, it, it giving like the limit to, 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 to my adjustment. So for example, if I rotate this, you can really see that the, 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 the yellow and, and the green, it is not going outside of this cube. So. If I dial back my saturation, so you can really see that. And then if I'm increasing it, I'm ramping it up, you can really see that it is all the data, all the signal, it is still contained within this virtual container. But what happens if, for instance, I'm taking this very same saturation adjustment and, um, and then do it after, after the transformations? So let me just move it and put it there you have to link it yeah there you there. go you can really see that probably in the image it's not it doesn't look like much but then it happened in, in, in my histogram it looks like that crazy so you know probably you want to avoid doing that in the in the after after the color transformations, so, so to see that in the in the vector scope view, we can also do that. I think it here you can just click view, and then you add a sub view. Select vector scope, and then select enable. And then you can see that all that data is like going outside of this say seventy five percent of the vector scope. So I think that's a, a tiny tip that I want to show you. And that's actually really, really important. You know, I was talking about broadcast and I remember that the first, the first like TV show that I did was for National Geographic. And in the grading room, we have like this analyzer, like these waveforms and we have Tektronics and in the early grading room, we have leader. And what it was great about it is that they were showing us in real time when our colors were out of gamut. 
And this is something really, really important because the eye cannot control the gamut of the color. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we see many colors. We cannot see a gamut of Rec. 709, we cannot see a gamut of Rec. 2020. So what that devices were doing, Tektronix leader were doing, is that they were showing us like the parts when we were out of gamut. They were showing like similar to a picking in the cameras. They were showing like yellow or red when the parts where we were like having these problems. Now what we what you just show us, Max, in some yes. ways like doing that. Oh man. I don't know. I was just wondering, I will like do a commercial and then I will put that commercial in resolve and do the fusion structure and check it in real time to see if my colors are not out of that box. If they yeah. are inside the box, that means that I can they can be live, they can go live. If they are out, probably I need to control something. Yeah. And since you can like have like the sub view uh, turn into something else, like for example, waveform of, or vector scope, that's really neat. Um, if you have like plenty of monitors in front of you, that's pretty much like a really nice uh, way of monitoring your image as well, probably. Yeah, 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 for sure. Right. So, so you were showing me also when we talk about one method that you divide in three colors, the saturation. Yeah. I know that one. How, how is that one, Max? Yes. Um, uh, it, 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 it based on a, how do you call it? I stumble upon my, um, how do you call it? I used, I used to take photo, a photo as well and, and do um, adjustment in, in Photoshop, do image reta retouching in Photoshop. And a lot of retoucher, um, a lot, uh, like one particular method that a lot of retouchers is doing is that by going to LAB color space, and then do the adjustment there. And then um, I've stumbled upon a, a, a guy called Dan Margulis, where he's like very like out loud promoting the LAB color when uh, doing adjustment in Photoshop. And it's like intrigued my, my curiosity. And I thought it's like, hey, maybe I can also do that in, in Resolve. Because in Resolve, if you aware, if you right click, there's like this options, color space which is like allowing you to um, to window shop different color space and, and also color models. So for example, I can go from RGB, like the default is RGB. I can go from RGB to HSL or HSV. And then also, hey, there's lab. So I can go to LAB. Um, um, but to show you that, let me just like- So, I, so Max, yes. what is lab? What is lab is, is, LAB is a color is a, is a yeah, color, is. Is a color model that um, comprised of three uh, uh, consists of three different uh, channels the uh, the L A and B so the channel L is responsible it's similar to YUV so the L channel is responsible for the lightness or the luminance so in that channel it it, it just tackle the luminance of the image meanwhile in 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 A channel um, it has color that goes from uh, it, it, it has like color that goes from a, a coordinates that travel from um, magenta to the opposite green meanwhile on the b it is like it goes from blue to yellow so anytime in in a channel you put positive value you will introduce magenta while if you put negative value you will get green and then in the b channel it is it is same like that if you put positive uh, value you, you got uh, yellow meanwhile the green you got b so let me show you that all right that's nice so oh, what is yes. when they use it is it common in in photography or uh, yeah it's very, very common, common in yeah. yeah photography yeah it's a photoshop uh thing i actually like I, i've met dan i like i've worked with uh, dan really? a little bit and he's yeah he's like written books right la about lab yeah. stuff um, but yeah, in the Photoshop world, it's like very, very common. Um, it's almost like uh, the equivalent of like aces where it's like, you know, the nerds that know what's going on are always pushing it really hard uh, because uh, it can improve so, things a lot. All okay, right. okay fasten your seatbelt, gentlemen. I hope this, this tip's <laughs> worth it. If, if I've never if, seen this for video, though, so I'm really intrigued by this. I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if it's not worth it, you guys can... Um, I never understood it before, so now I'm understanding it. Thanks. <laughs> so the thing is like this. If I, uh, 
how do you call it round trip a little bit um it means like my signal is is going from here to there and i'm in rgb and only in this node i want to go into lab i can just right click and go to where is that color space and i'll select lab and here just to prove a point anytime you put let let use offset uh, anytime you put positive value oh sorry let let us go to uh channel a just channel a so um this options we have like three different channel channel one two three and in the color space if we already select lab this channel become the l a b and if we are uh, choosing y u v channel one will be y channel two will be u and channel three will be v right so we only have like the y u v uh, l a b with channel a active so if i'm going like positive it's magenta negative it's green so uh, reset it back and then if i'm going to channel three which is b only if i'm going to positive i get yellow negative i got blue right so now um what i can do is that using all the available controls and resolve here I can do, for instance, like the very easy uh, method is that by having all the channels um, active probably, or, you know, let's do the, let's do this um, parallel node. So here in this, in this, I go to LAB with only channel A active and here LAB color space, LAB and only B channel active. We probably already uh, familiar with this, you know, let's let's warm up our highlights and, and cool down our shadow, right? And here we happen to stumble upon like the control that only do that, shadow and highlight. So for example, in, in, in the A channel, I can do like positive value. And then meanwhile, in the, in the B channel, in the shadow, I can do negative value. So, I got that I know it doesn't look much but there is a, an, another method that you can get like plenty more uh, controls compared to just this which like I absolutely love um, so let me show you that and to do that is actually it, it's the way Dan also use it in his method is like by using curve and it happened to be in resolve 17 you can do this so we are in luck guys <laughs> we can have like this massive curve interface to to do our adjustment um mm. what we what we can do here that's great is that um i want to divide it into three different channels so here i just use a parallel node so and can you not use here max the the splitter combiner node that's another method probably I haven't played around with that. Yeah, now that you mention it, you pr I probably can do that. Just uh, go to LAB color channel and then use splitter combiner, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I mean, I was I was just thinking about it. Yeah, that's probably gonna work. All right. But before uh, do the trial error with that, let let me show you this one first. <laughs> so this one, uh, the LAB only channel one. So we only have the L channel. And here, the second LAB and only A channel, which means only channel two. And the third one, I want to go to LAB color space and only have the B channel active. So I only have this. So now here, I can use this node top here just for my luminance and here, I can use for my A channel and here my B channel. So using the curve all ganged up together, maybe in, in the A channel, I want to warm up my highlight. Meanwhile, I want to cool down my shadow just like this. And here in the B channel, I want uh, similar like before, I want to warm up my highlights 
and cool down my shadow. And then if I do a compound node here, create a compound node, I can have like a pretty natural warm image that, you know, that is somehow, it's, it's like creating a, a, a small simple look on itself, you know, by adding like the LED saturations. And still, if it's if you ever, ever feel like oh it's it's a little bit much, you can still do that with a with a with a key and with a key output, and then just reduce it to your liking or split the difference, so to say, so to say. And there yeah, that's what I love. That's, that's what I love of compounds. Challenge. Yes. Yeah. Man. And it doesn't end up there. <laughs> Did I trigger your um, curiosity yet? So. It doesn't end up there. So if we go back in, in our compound node, and here we have parallel node, right? And let me reset my curve. And let me reset my curve. Um, instead of using the method just like boost, uh, using the topmost part of the curve and bottommost of part of the curve, I probably want to create a nest curve and using a layer mixer node instead of parallel node and by doing this I can try to use my editable spline and I can try to create the why well, it's not working oh, you're in the in the I'm mixer now wrong yeah. yes am I still in the LED yes yeah so here I probably can yeah create an S curve also, you, you cannot see this at the moment because we are in, par in, in a layer. In layer. Note. So, so the one you see is the third. Exactly. Yes. The bottom part takes the priority. So let's just deactivate it a little bit and just do that. And then in the, in the B channel, ex exactly the same. Probably reduce the top point a little bit. So it's like your, your imagination is your limit. Uh, when when you do this like you know play around with this there's no like exact formula where you can like uh, get the, the perfect how do you call it output um, now since I'm in layer node la layer uh, mixer uh, mode I can use the composite mode blending mode so for example I can select um, soft light and by using the soft light it takes like the the darker area the darker area of the image which is darker than 50 percent gray uh it makes it darker and then the brighter area makes it brighter so you kind of like in introducing contrast just through the the a, uh, the a and b channel and then still outside you can do the key output to your liking and you have a hold on why it's not working my reset reset Sorry. it uh, oh, yeah. my, my keyboard is in german layout so <laughs> <laughs> there you go so just by mixing around with a with a with a key output value i can get like very nice saturations on my image also very nice contrast on my image everything was done with leb so um awesome on top of that if you're using magic bullet looks, there's also a way to do exact like similar thing like this. You can also play around with with LAB. Um, for instance, let me show you magic bullet looks. Probably. Okay, let's let's disable this. So, for instance, if you are working in Premiere Pro or or in After Effects and you fi figure out that hey what Max showed me, it, it's really interesting and I want to, you know, play around with that and uh, how do I do that? Um, probably if you can do like color space round trip, um, you can still use Curve, but there is a tool inside Magic Bullet Looks that uh, can allow you to do that as well. And that is, let me create another note. I drop in Looks into this. And if I launch looks, it's another window, of course. So let me just quickly normalize my image using the open color IO that's shipped with the latest uh, Magic Bullet looks versions. 
and this is RE Loxy and I want to go to Rec 709 and I want to preview it in Rec 709 as well so the similar method to do to, to be able to have that kind of like adjustment in looks is that by using color remap and actually Stu Maswich show me that because I shared this concept with Stu is hey Stu I really love like you know uh, handling the saturations in the in the LAB and then this guy Dan um, wrote a book and something like that and he's like yeah let, let us let us figure out how, how to tackle that in, in looks and then he, couple of minutes later he came back to me you know what you can do that in 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 color remaps like oh man this guy's super genius <laughs> and um Stew, man. Stew, Stew, man. <laughs> and just for that i create um a, a preset for just that and but you know it's lame if i'm if i'm not showing you the the ground up way like from 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 scratch uh, to do that in color remap you can just like go to color moto lab and then i just want to tackle the, the the color not the luminance so i preserve the luminance and here i have three different uh patch like the the neutrals the white gray and black it's pinned to itself so if i want to hand like do the lab type of uh, saturations increase i can create different color mapping and if you remember in in a and b channel we are traveling between four different colors right magenta and and, per, uh, and green and then on b channel we have yellow and blue right so what i can do is that you know i can try to mimic that and here i can just like put it magenta map it to itself and then here the second one it is green map it to itself the third one will be yellow and map it to itself and the fourth one will be as you guessed it blue map it to to itself so now it does nothing now because it is just mapping itself by uh, ma mapping the color to itself but if i go to the first patch and i said like hey i want less saturated magenta to be increased to this magenta so if i do that you can really see that it is start to pick up all the magenta and then and boost it up so probably that's not very wise if you do it like like very obvious like that probably you know just play around a little bit same with with a green instead of like full you can reduce it a little bit and also in yellow and also in blue so if Ouch. i disable it you can really see like there's a small and nice natural increase in the saturations and all was now, done how would you in LAB. yes chat so how would you like if you wanted to like in the b channel for example if you wanted to just push blues into the shadows how would you do that with that model that didn't make sense to me uh just push blue in the blue okay let me show you that in curve so well, I'm, I'm saying like a magic bullet looks with the color remap could you, ah, okay. did you can so, you have control over yeah i think i missed that sorry no problem no problem i i got that like i understood like the so, process of yeah mapping, but i don't think i understood exactly what was uh, going we on we, we don't have like literally we we don't create the the channel like what we did in resolve in resolve we can create like dedicated node uh this one is only in a channel and that one is only b channel but here i can like simulate what happened in a channel by having a chip that goes from magenta to green and then yeah. another to another pair that goes from yellow to blue so this magenta and green will be my simulations of a channel and blue and yellow will be like my you know mock of a um, how do you call it the b channel so for instance if i okay. want to, if i want to increase the blue i can just like desaturate the the blue in the in the in the source but the thing is like the limitations with this approach inside uh looks is that i cannot just i cannot dedicate a specific area it's like oh, yes it's all the image it's yeah. all the image yeah. i want i want it to be in the oh, shadow okay. and i want it to be in the in the high interesting line. so it's but i mean like, exactly that's it wait what'd you say diego no that that i mean it's all the image 
but I mean, it's, in some ways, I will. I I'm always like, I always like that in saturation, general adjustments. Some way general adjustments. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, if if you want like, always think of saturation as a as a way to create depth. So, exactly. so it's like when you create depth, it's like in saturation, and it's it's actually really 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 easy to understand. It's like the closer objects are the ones saturated, the objects that are far away are less saturated. Yeah. So in some ways, saturation needs to be feel like like I think, or in my case, like something general. And for sure, if you need something specific, you can do a secondary always. But I mean, that will be another part. Yeah. Now I have a I have a question about that. This is a more of an artistic question. Do we have time? Can I ask you a question real quick? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Uh, okay. So like, one of the things, like what you said about like the Vikings example, um, or no, not your Vikings example, like the dancers example with like creating the the saturation first to create separation. Like that's mind blowing. I feel like I'm still processing that. Like I need to go to therapy and just like sit with that for a minute. Like that's like so epic. But um one of the things that I noticed when I saturate, desaturate things is that like it instantly looks like garbage. I think my preferences are to saturate things. It's like my personality, my aesthetic. Like I just naturally gravitate more towards the image just like of your dancers where they're just like full color max all the time like i love that look so maybe my eyes just aren't very attuned to desaturated things but it seems like when i had something when i have an image and i desaturate it it just looks like crappy i can't get it to look like the vikings shots where it's like desaturated but also still feels vibrant somehow and still mm. feels good like and it's really difficult to ask this question without any kind of example but like what am i doing wrong <laughs> like, is there something that like the like amateurs do when they desaturate an image or something that happens like a way to like kill the the feel of an image by desaturating it the wrong way um probably it's like the the, the approach like like the tool that you're using but it's it's not like a absolutely like a how do you call it an like absolute answer for that chat but I okay. just want to to give you a like a back like how do you call it like a story that like you know my story. Um, it's like it takes me like years to understand that you know uh, the saturations when you are doing like the saturations in film is like a little bit different than the one that you're doing with digital media. Like um, I think I remember somebody saying like you know the the colors in in film the more saturated they are the darker they are and that's actually leading into my sec uh, my another tip if you have time for that if you want to um, there's there's a way yeah. ap apparently you know if you want to mimic the saturation film in, in film I think we talked about it in the in the very first episode of Max on color where we uh, discuss about borrowing some aesthetics from uh, film looks and yeah. that's, that's that's particularly particularly just that the more saturated the color the darker they are and that's also can be done in in result or, or colorista um, easily so some some of you guys probably already know it but just to refresh your memory if you want to we can always use like similar method by you know going into different color space rather than uh, as uh, RGB and then doing our saturations there I found out that you know traveling to different color space it's like really interesting I mean I probably don't know all the math behind it but you know it gives me an, a really nice result so the first thing is that we can do this we can create two different notes and the first note I want it to be in in HSL and I want my luma mix to be at zero and I want it to be only in the channel 2 so it means that we, here we we turn off our hue channel and lightness channel so we only have the saturation channel active and then in the second yeah. and let's name it HSL so the second one we'll do like the HSV and then we'll do exactly the same channel 1 inactive channel 3 inactive luma mix at zero 
and let's name it HSV. And um, since we talked that you know the the more saturated a color in, in, in film, the, the, the darker they, they get. What you can do is that here in HSL, you can try to like reduce these saturations, like around about half. And then in HSV, you kind of like boost it up, like double. So let's put it somewhere over there. So in this case, Max, yes. is the gain working normally or what is the gain doing? So the gain here, it's it's like the luminance in the saturations channel so if that makes sense all right all right i see got it so the gain uh, since we are now in hsl so the gain will be like the luminance in the saturations channel and in hsv is like the luminance in the saturations uh, the value in the saturations channel so we we reduce the the gain in the HS, hsl by half and then we double up the value in the HSV. So if I create compound, out, co compound node, and you can really see that, you know, it's creating like this denser color, so to say. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Mm. It's nice. Yeah. Nice, and good tip. Great, man. So how do you, like, how does that work? Like, I'm looking at the vector scope. I'm thinking of the vector scope, and like, when I'm saturating it, like the colors are going outside of the the, yeah. the edges of the vector scope and it so it seems to me that like when you're saturating you're saturating because you're adding more red green and blue light to an image so I, I, is it just with film stock that it darkens or am i just it, blind or like what's too, i think it's it's a way to emulate the 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 way how color works in a subtractive method um which like, film operates right because film okay, is okay. Additive, so you're just talking about the subtractive film is subtractive exactly you're talking about like all saturation is subtractive interesting very interesting great tip nice I'm gonna try it i'm gonna try it i'm excited to try that one yeah man so anytime you want to to do a film emulation look you try to do the the density by doing this or yeah there's also a, a similar way where you can just simply just use the HSL. Where is it? And then just deactivate. Sorry, you don't even need to do that. No. You can have all three channel active. I think this is a faster way to do that. And instead of using the lift gamma gain, we can just use the uh, RGB mixer. And now we have like the HSL in, in H hsl in s and hsl in l so i can try to reduce wow. the saturations and the luminance and you know i got a similar effect and then i can try to increase the saturation in the saturations if if that makes sense it's you know, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's similar sense. interesting interesting that one is nice i like it oh so, awesome max that's great yeah, man. Um, so that that's Brilliant. like a some some method to to play around with the saturations. I mean, there are like very like a lot of like um, method where you can you know creatively increase your saturations. So next time, instead of uh, by default going to saturations and color boost um, uh, slider, try to use like all this method that you see today uh, round tripping to another color model and then doing um, that adjustment or yeah we haven't covered it but there are plenty more ways that you can do so for example there are like color aware color space aware tools that also has saturations control so for example the hdr wheel is color, color space aware so if you're having like a color management uh, framework that you're working in you can try to play around with this saturation slider in the HDR or with a curve, for example, with a hue versus saturations. Like you can increase it globally. Oh, sorry, I'm in a dead mode. You can increase it globally or you can also just, maybe I will yeah. increase my red, decrease my blue or something like that. And what's nice is that curve is also color space aware. So if you have color management framework that's probably the tool that you want to use right Diego? 
Yeah, and I will I will add to to that, Max, is that I mean, use saturation, why not? But save a still, save a, a memory grade, and then use another tool, and then use another tool, and try to compare them. Try to compare them because in not all the cases the same tool works. Yes. So actually, is when you are developing a look, that's the that's the way you have to do it. It's like try to use to use different like methods, and then look at all and say, hey, this one is definitely the one that I want in my image. And that is a key, that is key, it's like testing, testing, and then you can find it the most appropriate to your image. That's yeah. a good idea. And I think if you remember, Chad, the, the density stuff, um, I think in Colorista, there's also two HSL wheel, right? Um, let me just show Colorista uh, quickly. Bear, in me, bear with me, guys. Let is there me. not Colorista in uh, DaVinci Resolve? No, Colorista doesn't run in DaVinci Resolve. It is only running in Premiere Pro, Avid Media Composer, and After Effects, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's very interesting. I thought but, like the whole look suite was installed in the Resolve. What we can do, we can go to support page. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> and check the requirements. And Red Giant, Colorista. Yeah, there you go. It's yeah. After Effects, oh, Pro, Final Cut Pro, Apple Motion. Not Avid. Also, side yeah. note, I'm very impressed that uh, you got there that fast. Like you knew exactly how to get there. That's that's impressive, dude. The the supported host app, chat. Yeah, yeah, it's got there super quick. That's that's the 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 magic of recording a getting started video tutorials. <laughs> 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 Sorry, guys. <laughs> now, what about, okay, now here's another question, though. Like, isn't Colorista like a, a node, a, a block in Magic Bullet Looks? Say again. I lost you probably. It, is, isn't Colorista one of the blocks you can use uh, in Magic yeah, Bullet Looks? Yeah, it's actually a tool inside Magic Bullet Looks. Oh, man. I'm tool. So yeah. stupid. I, I can just. Yes. No. Instead of. <laughs> I why am I. Yeah, I didn't know if that was like the same thing though. Because some exactly. that, it doesn't have all thing. the things it goes. It doesn't yeah, have but, all the things the colorista. The, yeah, but the stuff that I want to yeah, do. There is a colorista. There. there is a colorista tool there. Yeah. Colorista plugin, you can say it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chad, for, for saving us this like <laughs> tools workflow for me. <laughs> oh no, you're fine, dude. Um, the input is um, Ari Alexa. So we got our a nice image over here. So for example, I mean, if we want to saturate our image and get some color a little bit darker, and if you're using Magic Bullet Looks or uh, Magic Bullet Suite and you have Colorista, you can also do that. Um, probably we can try to increase the saturations here with the saturation slider. And we have like this two wheel here. And the, the, I know that. the wheel in the left is the hue and saturations. So if I move my red, it's changing the hue. And if I move my red like closer to the to the center, it is desaturating my red. And then if I move it like uh, outside of this circle, it is like increasing the saturations of the red. So double click to reset that. And I want to point you out into this like this uh, second wheel because this is the hue and lightness wheel. So actually, if I want to darken a specific hue, for example, I, I don't think it's like exactly the same like what we did in Resolve with the HSL and HSV. But you know, if if um, you are working with Premiere in Premiere Pro and you have Magic Bullet looks, you can try to achieve like similar look with this approach. So for example, if I want to darken my red a little bit i can just like drag the red value the orange and the yellow just to get like the the warm color darker and um if i uh, switch it on and off you can really see that you know while the color nice. gets saturated it also get darkened it's it is hmm. that interesting effect. that one is interesting yeah i like that one nice I forgot about the numerical values thing. Thank yeah. you for reminding me of that. Yeah. That's great. Awesome. 
yeah that's that's colorista in action so yeah guys i mean there are plenty more um there, there are probably plenty more approach to play around with the saturations and i think if we keep talking i don't think we will <laughs> will will two hours will be enough for us so we seems to be like um running over our one hour mark like quite some time now it's like, it's 20 minutes over i hope you don't mind with that guys. and um yeah is, is there any questions nope and um, what is your what is your preferred method, Diego and Chad? What, what is your um, saturation uh, adjustment uh, preferred method? What do you guys normally do? I will say that I mean that in some cases I will don't have time to think. That is a mistake. That is a mistake. So what what this means that for example I have to create a movie uh, next week and it's going to be eight days. I don't know like I don't know how many shots there are going to be. So, in that cases, I will say that I use color boost. I use color boost, and I, in some way, I like it. I like it. And it is available but, in the panel as well, right? So yeah, if you're it's working with the panel, in the panel, it's there. Yeah. yeah, it's available in the panel. But what I like of these webinars is about what we see. Is that sometimes when we are working like really fast and so on, we forget how many incredible tools we have available. And we yeah. use the use sometimes use the the same ones, and then we think, hey, why I didn't get that look that I wanted, and that's probably because you use the normal tool. That's the thing. Yeah. We're not even talking about color war yet. It's it's, it's like yeah, very yeah, yeah. powerful tools, but maybe we we, oh, yeah. we can save it for next time. And what yeah. about you, chat? Do you uh, have your thanks favorite? Thanks for asking. Way? Uh, I usually do like um, like if I'm just gonna adjust just the saturation, then um, I will use vibrance. If like I'm in Lumetri uh, mm -hmm. or some like Adobe product, I'll use uh, vibrance if I want to bump up the saturation. If I want to take down the saturation, I usually just use just like basic saturation. So maybe that's why everything looks crappy. <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Color boost and vibrance. I I also love using that, especially combining that with the LAB saturations. If you remember, we have our LAB here, so yeah. creating a note prior to that and just increasing the color boost just a little bit. You can really see that you know, it really sing. That's that's how I like it. Yeah. That's how I normally okay. use it. So LAB and then color boost. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. So, so there you go, guys. Um, I hope you, you know, pick up some tips from today's sessions. And um, let me switch. So um, the, the <laughs> those are our, our tips for today about saturations. Of course, there are plenty more. Um, there are plenty more tools that you can use. And um, if you can just like pick up just one new tips for from today's sessions, I'd be like very happy already. So let let us know if if you um, pick up a new tips uh, from today's sessions. And um, if you want to reach out and let let us know, you can write an email to us to uh, maxoncolor at maxon.net. And don't forget to get your free T-shirt. And um, you chat already. Uh, paste the the link in the, the chat yeah and uh code for today is particle magic and that nice. will be valid until july right so awesome thank you so much for um for being here chad thank you so much diego yeah. and i think we'll see each other in in two weeks time right and yes in a while great. and in a while Take care, everybody. Stay healthy you know and see you in next And think about weeks. saturation. And think about saturation. <laughs> Dream about saturation. Yeah. And um, if, you, if you have different way of, of, of doing that, please let us know. It's really interesting. You, you can let me know. It, it, write me an email, maxoncolor at maxon.net. It will be like really interesting to know how you guys are doing your saturation suggestment, right? So right. sharing is caring. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, guys. See you next Bye. two weeks time and bye-bye.